Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Kerbal Space Program video in which, in case you hadn't read the title or thumbnail, I mean like why wouldn't you, but like if you hadn't and you just clicked this video blind then uh, we are we're going to be sending a base to EVE and landing it in EVE's ocean. So we're building a floating base. That was probably a much more concise way of describing this video, but whatever. Here we are launching it here. It's a fairly basic design with those peripheral tanks all feeding into the central booster so when the four peripherals detach um, the central unit will still be filled completely with liquid fuel and oxidizer to help propel us the rest of the way into orbit. We have those giant aeroplane wings you can see there as well just because this thing is horribly um, un-aerodynamic and so they are required to just help keep this thing nice and steady uh, on our way up. Um, now I'm sure uh, most of you are probably more interested in the actual design of the base itself, so I probably should have led with that. Um, but all of that will be revealed um, close up to the time when we're actually landing on EVE, although you can see it here. So I, I keep on talking about things and then immediately trying to clarify them and trying to justify the fact that I'm terrible at commentating over these things. But whatever, let's, let's, let's change the subject to the description of the video, in which there's going to be a download link for the craft file and of course as always is a link to a music video version of this mission for those of you with YouTube ADHD and just want to see kind of my classic style of videos because I know a good proportion of you would have subscribed to me initially because of the fact I made sort of music videos without commentary. I still think of those sorts of people the only reason I don't do that anymore and I kind of promote my commentaries over music is because I just got sick and tired of the music videos keep, like they kept, on, they kept on getting blocked all over the world and just like it's just set certain certainty like I had a video that was I was really proud of that got muted and uh, how many Kerbal videos have been muted now let's see there was the obviously there was the single stage to anywhere my late SSTO video the first one I ever made uh, luckily I've made better ones since then so it's not a great loss uh, a junior SSTO I made so I am I'm thinking about working on sort of remakes for these because uh, at least two of them were made on my sort of laptop and so they're only at 720p and the actual graphical settings are not that great and it's an old version of KSP so I'm I'm thinking of just sort of uh, doing a quote unquote remaster of those videos on my PC in the latest version of KSP just to prove not only that they still work but also to bring that video back to the, to the to the masses to the to the tens of you that want to see it again. And there we are, detaching the main booster stage and deploying the first of the two Rhino stages just to begin our circularization of Kerbin and to initiate the first of the two burns we'll need to do to perform our Kerbin escape. Now some of you may be wondering, Matt, you, you, you wonderfully handsome buffoon, why didn't you encase the payload in a fairing, therefore decreasing the amount of aerodynamic drag and ultimately saving fuel on the ascent? Well I'm glad you asked that random viewer. Uh, the reason is, is because I like to kind of keep these videos as stock as possible, so all the parts obviously in this rocket are completely stock and um, the stock fairings aren't so they aren't wide enough to fully encase a payload of this uh, diameter. Uh, the largest fairing can almost get around the structure, uh, but not quite, unfortunately. So I had to go fairingless for the ascent, which was a bit tricky because the top communications antenna that you can sort of see there at the well at the top of the rocket, I suppose, it's very very weak when it comes to heat tolerance, which did become fairly problematic when it came to landing on Eve itself, but. Um, I didn't, I ended up managing to work around that, but yeah, during the ascent I had to try and keep my velocity fairly controlled in the lower parts of the atmosphere where heat uh, was a big problem, uh, but, but yeah, that's why I couldn't use a fairing unfortunately, just because the stock game doesn't permit fairings of that diameter. Now I know I could have probably built a fairing around at least the top portion of that uh, antenna mast thing, but you know. That would have looked a bit naff, wouldn't it? <laughs> when we'd landed on Eve, and there would have still been sort of fairing structures in place. So that's why, that's why, that was, that's why there's no fairing. And with that, uh, here's our first gravity assist. Well, our only gravity assist. I don't know why I said first. We did a small gravity assist for the from the using the mum. <laughs> just forgot how to speak English for a second there. Uh, and then we're just doing an inclination change just to get ourselves on the right inclination to encounter Eve. Uh, you can get an EVE encounter direct from Kerbin, see my Expedition EVE for a, a few examples of this, but I kind of messed up my transfer window, and since we do have more than enough Delta V really for this mission, 
yeah, I, I wasn't too concerned about being particularly accurate when it came to getting an encounter. And we're pretty close. We have to spend an additional 257, is that? Or is that 287? I've got a very small preview window I can't quite see. But uh, here we are. Here we are performing that burn anyway. And we're going to see. We're going to aim for a fairly high, a fairly low, sorry, periapsis of EVE. We're going to do our initial circularization using engine burning just because error braking at eve can sometimes be fairly risky it's it's still quite dangerous to error brake at eve because its atmosphere is so thick uh ships can overheat very fast so i thought i'd use engine braking just for our initial capture and then we have those giant inflatable heat shields when it comes to actually sort of landing on eve so we've got a little bit of delta v left 252 meters per second so we don't need that much to actually deorbit, uh, as in lower our periapsis to within the atmosphere. So I thought I'd just use the rest of the fuel remaining just to lower our apoapsis as much as possible, just to you know shave down, shave our um, our re-entry speed. Although uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I've never done it before, but I'm pretty sure this thing could have re-entered if we'd left the apoapsis as it was. Now you can see we're doing a few orbits there. That was just to ensure that our periapsis would end up over the ocean or at least some kind of body of water. It did take a few attempts. It took a few attempts, a lot of trial and error, mostly error, <laughs> but we got there in the end. So we have these aero spike engines here. These were initially uh, incorporated into the design to slow ourselves right down when it came to touching down on the, well, I guess splashing down on Eve's surface. Luckily, the parachutes actually did a good enough job that we didn't really need the aero spikes, but it did come in handy when it came to actually re-entering itself. You can see this thing is very much wanting to flip over, but having those aero spikes burning uh, helped keep us nice and controlled and straight. If you just watch the uh, satellite dish at the top, I suppose, well, I suppose we've kind of slowed down enough where it's not a problem, but that thing kept on overheating so much. It was ridiculous. This video is probably the closest I've come to actually really wanting, obviously I would never do it, but I was just like, I could just, I could just turn off re-entry heating and no one would know, but I was like, no, you know, as a principle, we can't do that. So it probably took me, I'm not even exaggerating, probably about an hour and a half, two hours trying to get the re-entry to work without flipping. You can see, see me hitting F3 there just to ensure that nothing had exploded. And now we're just coasting down at a steady speed. There's no risk of re-entry heating, or at least re-entry overheating at this point. So we can just relax and allow ourselves to cruise down. So I turned off SAS just to, uh, you know, I didn't want to rip sometimes the ships can sort of fight the parachutes too much like I think I don't know why I turned it off to be honest um, <laughs> and with that welcome everyone watching this video to try and get better at the game I don't know what I'm doing but there we are uh, detaching the inflatable heat shields there we could uh, we had to wait until the main chutes were deployed before we could detach it because otherwise we'd be falling too fast and when we had detached the inflatable heat shields they were just fall at a slower rate compared to the base itself so they would end up sort of smacking into the the base of the base <laughs> so but when we deploy the parachutes uh, we are now creating more drag than the actual shields themselves so when we detach them they'll fall away nicely and not cause any destruction of things and here we are splashing down so yeah those top shoots kind of helped ensure that we'd uh, remain upright as we touch down and now, without further ado, I suppose we can do a cinematic zoom in on the ocean. And you can actually see on the right uh, in a minute, one of the shields, there it is. One of the shields actually survived the splashdown, so there's that little bit of debris there. And also the modules that contained the parachutes are still there. We detached them, but they, they floated. So maybe I'll just destroy them with Wacker Kerbal. <laughs> just, um, and we'll just pretend that they sank, but whatever. Just for the purposes of making this video, you know, transparent. We'll leave them there for when we're showcasing this thing and there we are deploying the communications tower and then we can cut to deploying these solar panels that we don't technically need because we have loads of rtgs that's how we were able to maintain electric charge throughout this video without any solar panels we have so many rtgs and such a vast amount of electric charge that it was never really an issue we didn't really need solar panels but you know just as a backup power source we have them here we are showing off the hydroponics garden which is like you know botany uh, that's the only green part in the stock game so i kind of you just got to use your imagination there and there's our science junior array again overkill because we're only going to be in one biome um, but whatever here's our kerbal here assessing the mystery goo at eve's ocean and he can go for a quick dip because his spacesuit i assume protects him well from eve's oceans then we can just climb him up this little ladder 
hitting the F button just to make sure he climbs out, messing up the first time, but then gracefully scrambling on, making sure we don't drop him down one of those holes, tripping over the seismometer as well as we do, before running around onto the ladder so he can board again. <laughs> uh, there's not much more to really comment, to be honest. We could do a cinematic pan around, just showing you the basic modules. I know they're basically all just crew storage, but you can use your imagination to pretend there's bedrooms and things like that on here. And that's the end of this video. If you want to watch more of my content, on the top left is a mission to Tylo. Top right is a mission to Lathan Elu via SSTO. And bottom right was chosen specifically for you by YouTube's algorithm. So enjoy.